us a bit more about, you know, how to become a solution architect. Uh, what's the roadmap look like? Um, so let's say you are a software engineer. I think the best way to go about it is to start by experimenting with new technologies and experimenting with new paradigms that are out of your day-to-day -day job. You, you know, to avoid becoming what we call the expert beginner, to avoid becoming an expert, but only in your specific technology. So you want to reach out out of that comfort zone, as we call, and then uh, um, also start building stuff on the side, right? So that, that helps you build things where you are your own product manager, team lead, you are your own CEO, you are your own CTO, right? Um, afterwards, I think you should aspire to get uh, more experience around people. So uh, uh, like a, the role of a team lead is a great role uh, uh, to start with. Then probably if you want to become a manager, you don't have to. But having that say of or that view over that overview, I would say about the whole development life cycle, the development product life cycle helps a lot. And then you can't, I would say, especially in this day and age going forward, you can't ignore the cloud anymore. I think it's pretty obvious. So I would advise that at least you become an expert in one of the main cloud providers. There are four right now, if you count Alibaba. And uh, yeah, so once you become a, a uh, you know an expert and, and there's different levels of experts, I would say, but once you feel comfortable deploying and, and, and maintaining and testing all kinds of um, um, workloads that goes on the cloud, I would say then after that, you can start asking your uh, the company you're working with, you know, your director or whatever, you can start asking them for more responsibilities. You ask them to take on a project end to end. And that would, again, take all that knowledge that you have and start applying it. Doesn't mean you do it yourself, but you become the sort of the champion of that product, of that project. Now, doing that a year, a couple of years, you have a few successful projects that you have, you know, under your belt that you've undergone. And that's where my advice is, that's where certifications start becoming relevant. I don't advise people to start with certifications from the get-go, because at that point, you're you're pretty much looking at them as, a, as if you're passing an exam to graduate high school or whatever. Yes, I got a mark. But you actually want, want to use your certification to validate the knowledge that you have. You've already been working with the cloud. Now you have a certification that, you know, just validates it. Yes, this guy, this girl, they know what they are. Uh, uh, they are talking about. So now, you know, you have the technical background, you have the business background, you've already have run some successful projects end to end, which means you've interacted with a lot of departments within your company. You got certified, which means that the cloud provider themselves gave you that thumbs up. I think at that point, um, and, uh, you know, assuming that you are someone who is knowledgeable about the industry, knowledgeable about technologies, who are curious, I think at that point, you start looking more at the uh, at the solutions architect role and you start applying for the solutions architect role because you can back it up. That's, that's pretty much how, well, maybe I'm biased because that's how I approached it. Maybe, like, I see a lot of boot camps out there. I see a lot of promises out there, you know, you become a solutions architect if you take this course in 21 days i don't know maybe it works for some people but that's pretty much how i did it and i think that's how i th th that's how i advise anyone to go about it i want to be someone who knows this technology just on paper right you, you want to be someone who's who went to war <laughs> you want to be a warrior and then after you you come back from the war you get that medal that says yes this guy or girl we uh, appreciate us so this is how i look at, at certifications but you don't get the medal before doing the work. That's pretty much how I look at it. Got it. So get some uh, software engineer experience and then uh, learning about, you know, the business side of things and then getting a certification. That's great. Um, so in terms of learning, I guess like I, I really want to learn more about, you know, how much knowledge. So let's say, you know, someone wants to be a cloud solution architect in, you know, the field of AWS, for example. You know, how much knowledge does this person have to know about AWS or this cloud services, you know, to help customers, to help, uh, it doesn't matter if it's in, 
external or internal, but how much knowledge do you really need? Like, do you have to know everything that's out there to, um, you know, to, 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 to perform this job? Like, or, you know, there is on job training um, that will help you to, to grow. Like, what does it look like? That's a, that's a tough question. That's a difficult question. It, so if you look at the job description at AWS, uh, for a senior solutions architect, you need eight years or plus in a similar job or domain or technologies. So let's say eight years plus doing software architecture, which means that you had your fair amount of successes, but also failures. Now, if you want to quantify how much, yeah, and, and why I mentioning this, because that comes with a lot, like eight years doing this, which means you've, you've seen a lot of stuff. Now, if you want to quantify, even at AWS, there are two types of solutions architects. You're either a generalist or a specialist. A generalist, and there's also principle. We'll, we'll talk about principle. A generalist is someone who is aware and knows about all the cloud services, but they are experts or, but they specialize in one aspect of it. For example, when I was at AWS, I was specializing in, in serverless and in IoT, and there's no limit. You can specialize in whatever uh, fields and how many fields you need to, uh, you want to. Just keep in mind that every specialization comes with requirements, meaning that you need to have time to join meetings and conversations and customer group feedbacks and 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 uh, lunch uh, feature lunches and do conference talking around these kind of things so it's not advised to join more than one or two usually but you're a generalist so you can speak to any or the majority uh, uh, of these services up to, I would say, 200, 300 level, given that 500 is expert, 100 is novice. Now, if you're a specialist, then you breathe and live your specialty. You can be specialized in security, you can specialize in containers, you can, and you become this highly skilled solutions architect that we call on uh, when we need, when, when the generalist solutions architect uh, uh, sees the need, right? So as a generalist, you say, okay, we're going to use this and do this and do that. But you know, what, there's this new intricacy here and I would rather specialists to address it. That's when you bring in someone who's really specialist because that person, that's their field, right? Security, serverless, data, uh, like big data, machine learning, AI, IoT, stuff like that. And then there's a principal solutions architect. And to become a principal solutions architect, you're not solving problems for specific customers. You're actually solving problems at scale. You are solving problems for 100 customers at once. And how you do that is, for example, you wrote, you write a book and this book is called, here's how to solve this problem. <laughs> and then rather than meeting with customers one by one, you can't be in a hundred places at once. We actually write a book that a thousand people can read. You can give a conference. You can go to reInvent and talk and talk there. You produce great quality content. I could share with you some, some YouTubers that are really specialized on AWS uh, uh, and some of AWS uh, uh, concepts, and you can share you can share that if you will with your uh, with your developers with sorry with your viewers. Um, now, how much learning? That's hard to quantify. People learn in different ways. I myself find my my myself become uh, like my eyes get tired recently, and I start to use glasses to look at screen. So reading from screen become a little bit of a challenge, especially since the pandemic started, and we spend in ten hours a day glued at our screens. So I learn a lot from podcasts and audiobooks. That's that's pretty much it. I don't read books anymore. I listen to them. Um, now you don't have to be that. Uh, 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 that person who have to read and subscribe to every blog out there, every release, every software, but you need to be able to follow up with the big changes in the industry. There, there's some things that you have to, in my opinion, that you have to be aware of. For example, reinvent new launches. If you specialize in AWS, I would say don't miss reinvent. There's a ton of great stuff. I started also doing some recaps uh, in my channel about the new stuff that gets launched at uh, reinvent. Um, there are some there are the, the AWS the AWS podcast I love that one and also when I because I specialize in serverless there's a screaming in the cloud with uh, Jeremy Daly right I love that one there's a 
uh, yeah, maybe maybe I would say the short answer is you really don't have to kill yourself, uh, but you need to be aware of the, the the paradigm shifts in the industry when they come, the big releases in these big technologies. So let's say Docker releases a new API, Kubernetes releases a new API, uh, Lambda is doing this big feature, right? But you don't have to really go because there's always Google to help you when you are designing your, your architecture and looking at the requirements. There are always articles that you can search for, but you need to be able to have this big pillars in mind. That's pretty much how I look mm -hmm. at it. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. So that's very interesting. And what kind of like, uh, you know, what kind of YouTubers or what kind of uh, people do you subscribe to, um, you know, to stay up to date? Oh, yes. Um, one of my favorites, it's called Foo Bar Serverless. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a lady who lives, she's a developer's advocate uh, at AWS Developer's Advocate. She lives in Finland. And I'm always following her videos because whenever there's a new feature, that goes out around serverless, she's the first one to do a demo. She's the first one to explain it. She's the first one to give, to share code in GitHub around it. So I, I really follow her uh, to keep, uh, so just keep up, up to date uh, on, on serverless. Um, there is a new YouTube channel that I noticed from Australia recently. It's called Tech with Lucy. And I like the way she approaches these subjects from her own experience as someone who joined AWS as an intern and then climbed the ranks and did the certifications and did the work. And she's always sharing uh, the knowledge with her viewers. Uh, but then there, there are like my go-to for learning, like there, there's some YouTube channels that I follow around uh, security, around IoT, home assistance, home automation, and stuff like that. But my go-to for learning technical stuff that I would apply uh, uh, on day-to-day -day basis is still books, it's still articles and podcasts also to, to, uh, to, uh, to an right. extent. Um, there are a few of YouTube channels that I don't have that come to my mind right now, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Awesome, awesome. That's very great. Um, yeah. So my last question here is, you know, like, do you have any, um, you know, advice or any final words that you want to, you know, give out to the audience who, you know, maybe who who is currently a software developer who think about, you know, transition to, you know, SA? Um, uh, what are some advice do you have for, you know, you know, developers out there, or maybe even even better, like maybe there's some product managers who are considered about this path or maybe uh, DevOps or, um, you know, you know, any, any tech related roles uh, out there that are looking at this video, like what are some advice that you can give uh, to, to, to these people who are thinking about becoming SA? Yeah. Um, there is a big difference between people who read and people who don't, honestly. Um, th there's a big difference between people who read, for example, white papers and people who read blogs, right? And I'm, I'm not trying to, alienate people or whatever but i think not reading white papers not reading um, research papers not reading books by not by not reading books and all these things you are missing like people are missing on a big chunk of information that unfortunately doesn't get translated if uh, into blog posts because ultimately people who are writing blog posts um um, they're trying to combine, like to to compress a lot of information into a few hundreds of lines. And so a lot of things get missed. So I really, really, really advise, but if someone wants to learn a lot about AWS, I advise them to read, for example, the well-architected framework, right? I advise them, and that's a white paper. Uh, it's actually not, not really long. It's maybe 40, 50, maybe 60 pages. I advise them to read uh, about the... Uh, 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 what's called the shared responsibility model white paper, right? So you can read about the shared responsibility models from blogs and stuff like that. But when you read the white paper, you notice that, oh, there's a huge information there that I've completely missed. Sometimes there are white papers around cryptography and encryption. Like I read one page, I'm like, no, 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 this is way above my level. This is like, I need a PhD in mathematics to understand that. So I'm not saying, you know, you have to, but I'm saying that by missing on these things, you're missing on a, on a mine of gold. Um, so yeah, I, I, I tell people like, Go to the architectures to the aws.com slash white papers. There's a ton of them there. The second thing is reference architectures. So developers, software engineers, we are used to design patterns. We use them pretty much every day. Sometimes without even knowing you, you use a framework and these design patterns are baked in like dependency injection, singleton and stuff like that. Well, you know what? There are design patterns for architecture as well. And I, I advise people to study these reference architectures because even my job at AWS was a part of my job was when I see 
see that a few customers in my batch that I work with are having similar problems, will I try to come up with a, a, a reference architecture that I can reuse, that I can share with them, that other essays can use, but sometimes also I can publish it, right? And, and people can say, oh, if I have a stream, if I want to ingest data from uh, a live type of data coming from on-prem and I need to do this and this and this, and then after I need to create this data mart and whatever, there's actually a reference architecture. I don't have to reinvent the uh, the wheel here. So this is this is the second point. So study reference architectures. Um, <clears throat> um, the other thing is, this is something I used, this is a mistake I used to make back when I was a junior developer, is I used to think that engineering and writing code is the most important aspect of building a product. I don't think it's true anymore. Uh, uh, at the same time, time when we talk about stakeholders we miss we don't talk about developers when we talk about stakeholders we only talk about products and business and marketing and security and all these kind of things but you know what if there's anyone who has a stake in the feature is developers because they write the code they actually have a big stake in it so if you are a products manager please include developers or team lead or architects or whoever uh, have uh, 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 are responsible of the technical aspects please include them as a stakeholders a Allow them to be there from the get-go to understand the realities of your business. And that way the collaboration goes smooth rather than looking at them from above and, and just say, hey, we had these discussions with business and now we want our developers to, uh, to implement this feature because no, you, you want to include them. They are stakeholders as well. Um, there, uh, there is a ton of information out there. Consuming information, it can inform, it, there was a time that information was an edge. I don't think it's, it is anymore. There's a ton of information and it, it, it doesn't correlate it's not like the more you know the smartest you are I don't think it is anymore. Now you need to find quality information and you need to, I would say you, you even have to push back some, some information because there's just a ton of it and you can't keep consuming everything. So you need to know exactly what you want and filter the noise and, and you know, find sometimes just two or three or four sources of good information that's enough than following, uh, subscribing to a hundred channels and, and reading a hundred books and, and listening to a hundred podcasts. So yeah, so know exactly what you want and try to filter out the noise and I would say the last thing is there is no shortcuts. You know, there's unfortunately no shortcuts. The, anyone who telling you doing software engineering in general is easy is trying to sell you something, <laughs> right? Um, that's my my point on, that's my my view on these yeah. boot camps that promise you to become a senior in whatever in, in two months or in three months by paying this or whatever. I think, I think, Doing this is this thing is hard. Doing this thing is tough. It's not meant for everyone, right? So it, it's fine. Um, but don't believe anyone who tells you, and don't believe anyone who tells you that it, this is easy. It takes work. It takes focus. It takes will. Yeah, you need to want it. And uh, yeah, so there's unfortunately there's no shortcuts. You have to put in the work. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Elias, for you know doing this show, and you know uh, thank you very much for those information there. Awesome. It's been my pleasure.